Hey guys, it's Ramina Math Person, and today I'll be going over question 171 on SO Exam P. So I'll pause the video quick and try this problem yourself. Okay, assuming you are attentive, let's just dive right in. The return on two investments, X and Y, follows a joint probability distribution with this little thing here. So assuming that it is in the first quadrant, it's going to give you like X plus Y is less than 1. So then this is exactly Y is less than 1 minus X. So if it's in the first quadrant where X and Y are both positive, it's going to be starting from 1, it's a slope of negative 1. So what about in the fourth quadrant? 1, 2, 3, 4. In the fourth quadrant, x is positive and y is negative, right? So if we try that out, if x is positive, x, and y is negative, negative y is less than 1, you get that negative y is less than 1 minus x. When I divide by a negative, the sign switches sign, the sw <laughs> sign switches, so you get negative 1 plus x. So it's a starting from negative 1, it's a slope going up and over 1. So this is 1. And as you can imagine, like if I try like negative negative, you're going to get like negative x minus y is less than 1. So then y, negative y is less than 1 plus x. y is greater than negative 1 minus x. So you're going to get a at negative 1, the slope is negative 1, 1. So it's going to look like this, right? But it's in the fourth, third quadrant, so it's going to look like this. As you can imagine, it's a diamond. It's a uniform diamond. And we're trying to fi find a um, variance of x. We know the variance x of formula is equal to the second moment minus the first moment squared. And let's find the expectation first. Expectation of x. I can divvy it up into two, going from, I'm going to solve in terms of dy, then dx. So if I so solve in terms of dy, like this way, I'm summing up x from negative 1 to 0, and then summing up y, I don't know that yet, and then I'm doing from 0 to 1. 0 to 1, we already figured these two lines out. These two, the first one is 1, y is equal to 1 minus x. This line right here is y is greater than negative 1 plus x. So that's the two limits here. 1 minus x and negative 1 plus x of 1 half. And if we're finding x, we have to multiply by x, dy, dx. And then how about for this one? The upper limit for this negative 1 to 0, this one right here is a exactly starting from y-intercept with a slope of 1. And the lower one is a starting from negative 1 with a slope of negative 1. 1 half x dy dx. Okay, so if I'm solving in terms of dy first, the 1 half x is just a constant. So you get 1 plus x minus 1 minus x. This There's still another integral here, dx plus 0 to 1. This is going to be the same here, 1 half x. 1 minus x minus 1 plus x <laughs> dx. So then on the this side you get 1 plus 1, 2 x my x plus x, right? So that's plus 2x or x plus x, yeah. And on this side you get 1 half x, 1 minus minus 1, so that's 2, minus x minus 1, so that's minus 2x dx. So this one you get when you multiply the half x in, you get x plus x squared integrating from negative 1 to 0 plus 0 to 1 1 half x, there's this 1 x minus x squared dx So solving in terms of x, you get x squared 1 half plus 1 third x cubed integrating from 0 to negative 1 plus x squared minus x cubed 1 third times 1 half, integrating from 0 to 1. So when I plug in the upper limit, you get negative. In the lower, you get negative. When I plug in 1, the one square, negative 1 squared just becomes a positive 1 squared, so that's 1 half. But the negative, when I cube it, it still stays a negative, negative 1 third. On this side, you get upper limit is 1 half minus one third, lower limit just zero. So you get zero minus this, and then this is minus zero. So essentially you get negative one half plus one third plus one half minus one third. 
which is equal to zero. So the expectation or the mean is zero. And this one, I, if you did, if you noticed that it was a by symmetry, the mean is going to be zero. That's great too because you know that this side is going to cancel out with this side, or you can also think of it like this side is going to cancel out with this side. So either way, you knew that even if you didn't do this whole thing, you knew that the expectation is zero. But I just wanted to show you guys because it's a good setup for e to the x squared. So x squared, it's still the same limits of integration going from this. 1 plus x, negative 1 minus x. But instead of 1 half x, you're going to integrate 1 half x squared plus 0 to 1, it's the same limit, 1 plus x, 1 minus x, 1 half x squared. And you're integrating in terms of dy first, so you're left with negative 1 to 0, 1 half x squared, integrating the sucker out. That's still going to be the same thing in the inside. It's still going to give you 2 plus 2x. And on this side, you're gonna, still going to get 2 minus 2x <laughs> dx. Um, multiplying that 1 half to x squared in, you get negative 1, 0, x cubed plus x cubed, x squared plus x cubed plus going from 0 to 1, you get x squared minus x cubed dx. Taking the in antiderivative, you get x cubed one third plus one fourth x fourth plus integrating from zero to negative one plus x cubed one third minus x fourth one fourth integrating from zero to one. Again, upper limit here is going to give you zero minus this is going to be a negative one third here, negative one third plus a positive one fourth plus on this side you get upper limit here is going to be one third minus one fourth minus zero so then the two negatives here make a positive so you get one third minus one fourth plus one third minus one fourth so you get this is equal to one six beautiful and we just have to put it, put it back into our variance formula variance of x is equal to second moment minus the expectation squared. So that's 1 6 minus 0, which is 1 6. Our answer A. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Otherwise, as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Bye!